Hey there folks, welcome back for some more Project Zomboid content. Today we'll be talking about the fabled Build 42 and more specifically asking some questions about its plans for a part of Zomboid that, right now at least, is considered widely to have some fundamental problems. We're talking about the end game today, what the perceived problem currently is, how the developers have acknowledged and plans to remedy this problem in Build 42, and most importantly, whether it's going to be enough. If you find the video entertaining or get involved with the discussion for yourself, drop the video a like to support the channel and subscribe for more videos just like this one. So before we get into anything else, let's talk about Project Zomboid's current endgame and why many players feel it's a weakness for the game itself. Project Zomboid is a game of various objectives that you'll be setting yourself in order to survive coming challenges. For the first couple of weeks in game time, potentially longer for newer players, your actions will mostly be centered around things like improving your skill levels, acquiring and learning to operate a generator for when the power goes out for good, and having enough food stocked up to survive survive a long period of time. There's a whole bunch of lesser goals along the way that aid in the achievement of the larger objectives like the ones I've just mentioned too, stuff like acquiring a vehicle or finding tools to start a half-decent farm. For this reason, the early game is filled with a wealth of possibilities and choices for you to make as the survivor. You have options, basically, and as time goes on, you'll be ticking things off your list until eventually you'll hit the point where you're self-sufficient. Now, the problem emerges for players that have played the game a few times over already and ultimately have learned how to play effectively. An experienced player that's less likely to get themselves killed during the first couple of weeks can pretty much acquire everything they need inside of a week or so if they're planning properly. So what happens then? Well, the answer, currently, is simply survive as long as possible. And while some folks out there enjoy a sandbox experience, we've seen time and time again again in the gaming industry that it's all too easy for a world to feel empty as a result of a lack of attainable objectives. That's not to say that Project Zomboid is empty because it's certainly not, but once you get a few weeks into each playthrough on a regular basis, it will start to feel as if you've got no purpose. You'll go from having a plethora of aforementioned goals, objectives and choices to make to having one singular task, and that's a pretty drastic change of pace. So this is the problem that many players find with Project Zomboid after putting in significant time with the game and a part of the experience that the developers themselves have highlighted as one of the game's weakest points. Although no date has been confirmed at the time of this video, Build 42 is on the way. So now we move on to what the developers are planning to attempt as a remedy in this major update. There's a whole lot of content coming with Build 42. If you're unfamiliar or have recently joined the Project Zomboid community, the developers development team tend to favour infrequent but content-filled updates. If you're looking to verse yourself on everything we currently know that's coming to Build 42, I did a video on this pretty recently that I'll leave linked in the description and on screen for you. I won't cover everything planned for that update in this video, rather focus on the bits that will affect long-term play, the biggest of them being the new crafting overhaul that we're expecting. Now the crafting overhaul is a bit of a beast in itself, but I'll do my best to summarise. With the new system, we're expecting various functional machinery, including an interface modders will be able to repurpose, new skills like blacksmithing, masonry and pottery crafting, a ton of new recipes for crafting itself, new processes like brewing of alcohol, and workbenches at various tiers made to build gradually improving equipment, tools or other items. All of these things come together as part of an interlocking crafting web that requires individuals with several skills to interact with one another in order to achieve cooperative crafting outcomes. The interesting part of all this is that the system is built from the ground up, quite literally, on the basis that the survivor will have no access to any lootable items. This means that someone can at least start making forged tools with what they could find out in the wild. Sticks, stones, anything they can scavenge really. Now, this is important to our discussion 
caution because this is also a large part of the developers' plans for late game Project Zomboid. They envision survivors banding together in post-apocalyptic communities long after the outbreak, as in years, not months down the line, and using these crafting skills in a joint effort, using whatever they can find or build instead of looting the items needed. Currently, most multiplayer servers will use loot spawns in some capacity because quite frankly there's no way to operate without them, but this new system aims to give them the option to turn off loot spawns and still provide a good experience since everything can be crafted. That brings us to the main question of this video, which I'll pose to you folks of the Project Zomboid community and give my reasoning for my stance on the issue afterwards. The question being, is this enough? I want to preface the upcoming spiel I'm about to give by saying I love what we've seen planned for this update, including stuff like the sorely needed mod menu improvements, the randomly generated basements, the animals coming with the next build which includes cattle for our safe houses, and of course the crafting overhaul we've spoken about thus far. But I do still think, despite all these additions, that we're going to have the same problem we have now. All of these features are fantastic, and they're going to add a whole lot to the early and mid game experience of Project Zomboid, but is it going to add longevity? Ultimately, in my eyes, all of these new features are solutions to problems that we already face, and we face them pretty early on. Cattle farming and hunting serve to provide us another source of food, of which, at the moment at least, we have plenty of, from looting grocery markets to fishing, farming crops or trapping. Basements, and whilst I'm at it, the new map expansion coming in Build 42 as well, offer us some more map area to explore and new loot to acquire, which is great for extending playtime in the short term. But once players have explored these new areas, we'll be faced with the same question of longevity in playthroughs. Lastly, the crafting overhaul and all of its intricacies, whilst incredibly complex from what we've seen so far, do we really have a reason in vanilla, bog-standard playthroughs to actually go further than the point we do currently? Sure, we can make hammers and tools for ourselves with blacksmithing, or we can turn to pottery crafting to assemble our own containers for things like meals or fluids, but currently at least, are we not just able to acquire these when we're looting? Of course, there is something to be said for providing an alternative experience in the game, as these new systems will be a lease of life when it comes to primitive survival playthroughs, or playthroughs that drop you into the outbreak years down the line. But we'd either need a supported vanilla map that replicates a forest wilderness environment, much like the popular mod The Forest, or alternatively some additional loot and sandbox options to vastly reduce the amount of pre-outbreak items scattered around the vanilla map. Now, to my knowledge, nothing of this sort has been mentioned in blog posts just yet, and that's what worries me about this. To push players to use these systems, there has to be a reason why they would do so, and right now, with what we've been presented, I don't think the vast majority of players would have that reason. Obviously, this can be changed with mods on the Steam Workshop, but I don't think it's right to rely on modders doing that sort of thing, and thus I'm trying to focus on the vanilla aspects of the game in this discussion. I'd be really interested to hear what you guys think about this whole thing. If you think I'm nuts and that there is plenty of reason why players would get more longevity out of their experience with the game in Build 42, please do drop something in the comments and say your piece on why you think that might be. Equally, if you're of the opinion that Build 42 might not be enough to carry people into the later stages of Project Zomboid, then equally I'd love to hear from you as well. So, we've talked about the stuff coming in Build 42, we've talked about the end game issues with Project Zomboid itself, and why I personally believe Build 42 might not be the remedy that the devs are hoping it will be. Now, we're going to talk about just a couple of options I think they may have with regards to bringing more meaningful increase of playtime in the end game stages of a vanilla playthrough. So, one of these I've kind of already mentioned, which would be a vanilla official map that supported a primitive survival style of playthrough. The new crafting system is being built from the ground up to assume that survivors don't have loot items, so creating an environment where that kind of play is supported on an official basis just seems like a no-brainer to me, and whilst I know it's not ever as easy as just make a new map, I do think that a wilderness map is a lot easier to build than that 
that of an urban environment in the context of Project Zomboid. Not to mention, this sort of map can be a pretty basic implementation of the idea in the first instance, only to be expanded on later with some more unique points of interest. Now, I realise that one would be a bit of a stretch to ask for, especially for Build 42, so the next option is a much simpler implementation in my mind, and that's to provide the sort of sandbox settings I was talking about earlier in the video. We'd need to go further than the current loot options available to us, or tweak them to offer something that replicates diminishing loot levels due to looting. If you're playing single player especially, you've got a whole map filled with loot, but let's say after a week of playtime you start to notice that loot is diminishing as a result of other survivors taking supplies for themselves, you might be more inclined to actually use the new crafting system and alternatives to looted items that the developers are working up. Lastly, and this is certainly a more fully fledged option that would require a substantial amount of work from the developers, would be to create some long term problems or hurdles to overcome. Stuff that only crops up after a couple of months or more, but that can be remedied by solutions that are mostly present at this time. For example, let's say you have a refrigerator or a freezer for your food supplies that you're keeping powered by a generator. In Project Zomboid's current state, unless you set fuel and gas stations to the lowest possible setting, there's plenty of fuel out there to see you through years of gameplay. But what we're perhaps not considering here is the mechanical malfunctions that might take place after extended usage. Refrigeration sources breaking down after an extended period of time is just one example of how I think the developers could provide more objectives over a lengthier period of time, solving that drought of goals when we get further into the game. Other examples like potentially having the option to solve power outages in a local area using substations could be an interesting and high risk objective later into the game. But I also do realise that this could be a step backwards towards making players want to use the new crafting system for alternative options from powered items. At the end of the day, like I said earlier, these are just a couple of suggestions that I've come up with totally off the top of my head and I'm sure the developers do have their own plans we just haven't heard them entirely yet. My hope is that when Build 42 does come along, there's been some significant consideration as to the why behind a lot of these new features, and that there are some things they are keeping under their hats at the moment, but time will tell, I suppose. And if you've got any ideas on this for yourselves, I'd love for you to contribute them towards the discussion. That's it from me in this one folks, as always I've enjoyed talking this one over and I look forward to hearing from you on this topic. If you want to support the channel and join my Patreon subscribers on our whitelisted Project Zomboid server, there's a link to the Patreon in the description where you can pay £3 a month to join our server that hosts unique themes and events with the help of specially commissioned mods for the entire community every month. As always, a special thank you to my existing subscribers and I'll see you all in the next one.